Greetings and salutations. Sam here with Common Time Productions, and today I wanted to go over the beginning course for Mixcraft 10. A few things have changed places in Mixcraft, so I just wanted to go over a few things and just go over this basic, you know, setup and recording session right inside Mixcraft 10. So let's just jump right in. All right, I've already brought in a drum track and I've written and scripted that. And I'll do a video specifically for that for you guys later. But here, I've used a virtual instrument track, and I have used Steven Slate drums sample, and I have set all my drums on here and picked them out and got them going, mixed them a little bit to have some fun. And then the grooves were taken from the funk group category inside Steven Slate's library. All right. So we got that done and that's pretty cool. So we've got that inspiration and in getting us to do the track, but let's go over some other things real quick. So for me, the most important thing is the transport bar. You know, we get to play, rewind, record. These are the important things. Then we've got the loop, metronome, recording, punching in and out. We'll get to that in another video. And then we've got project, sound, mixer, library for fun loops. But today, I wanted to focus on some real basic stuff. Up here, we've got file, edit, mix, track, sound, video, file, and help. Then, of course, we've got some similar stuff. New project, you know, take us to a load project, add sounds, all this fun stuff. Some MIDI recording and learn buttons, preferences, snap to grids to switch out some fun stuff. We'll play with that a little bit later. Time and beats. I like working in beats so that I know what measure I'm in for my BPM. And I think that 118 is going to work today. Okay, so let's jump into the next part here that I wanna check with you guys. Under file, we wanna make sure that everything is in the right place and has been saved properly. We'll quickly double check that everything is in its place. So if we go to preferences, inside preferences, we've got sound device. For me, it's the ASIO. And at the moment, because I'm recording, I'm using Link Pro. My sample rate is 48 and my buffer size is 256, which gives me a 5.3 millisecond latency for playing and recording. And then under general, your basics, display, you can control a lot of different things from here, change colors, other interface fun things, change your mouse wheel option. And here's some other fun project settings, just other things that we can go through. Default project folder, this is an important thing for me. We like to have things streamlined and backing up. So not only do we have it go to our computer, we also make sure that it's sent up to the OneDrive in the cloud so that we always have redundancies and so we never lose an artist's work. After making sure you've got all that fun stuff taken care of, in the recording thing, I'll delete unused, and then I like doing takes personally, but you can change this for what your needs are. Metronome settings, I work well with what they've already supplied here, and I go about 46% for that. MIDI, when you plug in, you'll get a, lot, a, a few other things in here. Control surfaces, if you wanted to plug into a board, there are some really neat options out there with the Mackie systems, I believe. CD burning, library, plugins, ah, plugins. Um, I'll often do rescan my plugins all of the time. Mixcraft has made it very easy to bring in third party plugins and use them pretty much instantly. So, this will be a uh, something that you'll go to quite a few times with the plugin manager. You can even go in and customize this way further. Counts, fun stuff, hotkeys, other fun stuff we'll go over at another time. But here we have made sure that we've got the right sample rate, the right buffer size, and we're ready to go. We've got all our settings where we want them, and I think we're ready to track. So I'm going to adjust my loop. Oh, and it went right to the end. I'm not gonna need the metronome because I've got my drums playing. Got my BPM all set. Oh, you know, I do know I'm gonna do some fun blues in G. So I'm going to arm the track. So I make sure that I've got my left channel arm it. Now that I've got my track set up for recording and I've brought in a simple plugin to enhance my bass, I think I'm ready to track now and I think the levels are pretty good here. Let me double check my levels. I think what I'll do is just bring the drums down so I don't have to adjust anything else with the bass here. Let's see what happens. Thank you. 
happy with that. I'll take that. Okay, so I'm going to come back in here, delete my empty lanes, unarm my track, take off the monitoring here real quick. And it usually mutes my track, so yeah, let me unmute that real quick. Okay, so, you know, I, I think I'm going to do just two things to this real quick so I can have just a little, you know, tighter of a sound. Here. With the, the Steven Slate drums, I really love their tone, but one of the tricks I've picked up over the years is using itself to get some of these other elements soloed. And this is a really nice way to get a really powerful, clean drum tone. The fun thing is, is I'll come in here to Steven Slate and I will solo the drum go to that virtual instrument track and on here i'll just mix this down to a new track and this will give me a soloed kick track and i want to grab that snare so i'll solo just the snare and same deal come back to the drum track and mix to new audio track Okay, now that I have my drum tracks and I've separated them and I brought in my EQ, I realized, you know, I need to get my naming structure better here. I know that this is my my this is going to be my kick low. And then the one right underneath it, that's going to be kick high. You'll see what happens here in a moment. Okay, and then another fun trick, if you've got a VST that you like, you can hold alt, then select the VST and drag it down to the next track and it will copy it. This is a great easy workflow moment my top kick track, I'm gonna bring this down into the low end with my EQ. So I'm gonna round it off the low end right around 70 to stay away from the kick. And I'm gonna bring that you know high end out because I really wanted to boost the low end here. Give a little bit of a volume boost. But on the next one, I'm gonna do the reverse. So I'm going to just completely scrape the bottom end up to about 400, 500. We'll split it, we'll go 450. Now here's the other thing, with bass, I don't like to stomp all over my guitars. So I already know roughly that my guitar is gonna take over between four and 5K. So I'll usually give myself some room here to let the, leave that area for wonderful things from the drums or the guitars. This way, you know, I'm st I, we've got a carved out space for the for for the kick and and the high end low end of the kick and it's going to play well with the bass and the guitar and other elements of the in, of all of the instruments. So if we play these things two ba back together, just brings in that higher end, the transients of the kick, so you get that cut, cut, cut. But then with the other one, if we'll solo this one, there we've got that duh, duh, duh. So we've got the low end of the kick and the high end of the kick. Now let's say that's not quite enough, that's not quite doing it for us. Let's take this one step further. Now here's a fun place where we can use something like Submarine, which is basically an, an octave under the kick duplicating it. And I'm just going to go with, oh, ooh, I like that. Okay, heavy kick. That's the one. Put them together. So now with just a couple of adjustments, we've got a much tighter drum sound. Okay, so let's address the bass real quick. We're actually gonna take a very similar approach. So I'm gonna duplicate, but this one, gonna remove, we'll leave the R bass, but we are gonna bring in an REQ. 
We'll copy the REQ. Let's work with the first one. We know we want to tame a little bit of that high end. Don't want it to fight with those guitars. So similar thing, we're going to come in and, you know, stop that fighting right around four or five. Not really too worried about the runaway low end here. I think we'll be good. Uh, that interaction with the kick. Actually, let me go double check my kick. I think I did something silly here. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. I meant to set my kick where I like my kick. I like my kick drum down around 50, 60, 70. That's, it's a really sweet spot for the kick. I like that combo of the classic rock and modern rock, kind of, you know, pushing that all together. So I'll split the difference a little bit. Bring that back down. So now I know I've got a nice warm low part of my kick. So now let's make similar alterations to the bass. Okay, so I know that I don't want the bass to fight with the kick, so I'm going to bring that just above, like, right around 70. I also know that I do like the 125 to 112 punched just a little bit for my bass, so just a little bit. And then, yeah, you know, we're going to bring in and get that down. Actually, since this is the low end of the bass, let's get rid of all the extra stuff. All right, let's see. You know, I think we want to make sure to give that room to the guitar. So, you know, let's be conscientious of some of the other instruments here. Maybe we'll do just a bit of a volume boost there. And then with the next bass line, I'm going to do the exact opposite. I'm going to carve off the bottom. I'm going to bring up just a little bit there in the 3K. Let's see what this sounds like together. All right, I really like how this bass turned out. You know, this was a really fun time, and you know, I'm really excited to get back to this track. So I think I'm gonna, you know, leave you guys, and I think I'm gonna get back to, you know, recording. So uh, happy mixing, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>